Right now, over the main development region, we're keeping a close eye on this tropical disturbance coming off the West African coast. At this time, we do see that there's plenty of convective activity going on surrounding this storm system. However, it's expected to deal with a higher amount of dry air as this continues ahead further westward but we do see this storm at least for right now is rather healthy and that could be key in the more long-term future because the healthier it is um, during an earlier time frame the more likely it'll be be able to at least maintain just enough convection despite the dry air by the time this approaches the Caribbean for this to have another shot of developing uh, potentially developing into our next tropical cyclone and we do see that right behind it as well there's another area of moisture which which is expected to only in um, where the convective activity is only expected to enhance with this area of moisture as this continues to head further westward and once it approaches the Caribbean, which could create a concern that we could see tropical storm Emily develop. So here's what the latest initialization of the GFS model is stating at this time when it comes to the amount of relative hu humidity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We do see that there's expected, of course, to be uh, plenty of moisture as the storm system um, comes off the west African coast. We do have a decent amount of dry air just the north of this tropical disturbance. This is due to the fact that this ridge is very strong, so we're seeing a strong northeasterly flow that's bringing the Saharan dust from or southward and this could be an inhibiting factor for the storm system especially early on because we do see that the initial at least the initial wave of convective activity is expected to dissipate due to the amount of stable air over the main development region but it's not until later during the forecast we do see that another area of convective activity is expected to take over and um potentially be the more primary area where all um where the there is a possibility of tropical cyclone development we do see that the moisture definitely increases as we approach um, into um, early next week, right around Tuesday, August 8th. We do see that there's a decent amount of moisture right over the Lesser Antilles and extending into the um, western portion of the main development region, which could create a concern of tropical cyclone development. The good news is that, at least for right now, the GFS model isn't forecasting a well-defined center of circulation to develop just yet. However, again, it's good to point out, look at the forecast hour we're at. It's, we're around six days out with this forecast so there's still definitely a lot that could change and moving forward even more forward with the forecast we see that this moisture could spawn even more low pressure systems as it potentially approaches the gulf of mexico and we do see the gfs model does eventually develop something right around the gulf of mexico in the very long term future and we see another low pressure system develop just around the northern port the, the, the northern coast of south america so even if this doesn't necessarily develop in the more short term future this could have a more pro, um, prolonged effects in the more long-term future um, um, once this approaches the Caribbean and conditions could potentially become more favorable at this point but still a little too far out to say but whenever we see an influx of convective activity move over the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico during the August time frame one of the most active months of the hurricane season it's always something to pay attention to and even if this doesn't develop the Caribbean could still experience an enhanced amount of rain fall from this but we do see that this doesn't really develop in the more short-term future and a big reason why is due to the amount of wind shear that's currently expected which hasn't really where the forecasts um when it comes to the upper level winds hasn't really changed much since yesterday let me show you guys that right now so here's a wind shear forecast over the next several days. We do see that by Wednesday time frame, the convective activity should be around this area. And while the wind shear for the most part is relatively light, we have to keep in mind that for one thing is that the convective activity is expected to be over a very large area. And that makes it difficult for a tropical cyclone to develop when the convective activity is over a very large area because the energy is thus focused in on one area, of course, with tropical cyclones, we need um, tropical cyclones require all the air molecules and the energy to converge around one center of circulation. When we have uh, an area that's too large, uh, a convective uh, an area of convective activity that's too large, then that means that the energy is a little bit too dispersed and spread out to the point where the wind speed 
can't increase since there isn't enough convergence in one area and the air pressure will remain relatively high for the uh, tropical cyclones um, to develop so that's one problem that this storm system is going to deal with as it approaches the caribbean we need to see the storm system be a little bit more compact and smaller to um before i can confidently say that this has a better chance of developing into a tropical storm and of course the other big factor is the strong upper level winds that are expected since we're going to see a jet stream dip around the northern portion of the atlantic um around the early part of next week right around the tuesday time frame that's going to force this upper level low to move a little bit further southward and that'll create a strong northerly flow in the upper levels to the point where the wind shear will be quite strong over this storm and since the tropical disturbance is expected to move in a northerly direction which is opposite from the up um from the direction the upper level winds are moving towards that's gonna create enhanced wind shear even more to the point where that could definitely inhibit this storm and if this were to be the case then it's un it's unlikely that we're gonna see a tropical storm develop right around the caribbean this still could change um the key thing will be when this jet stream dip will move just uh, south of greenland how fast it moves there's still time to iron out the forecast and of course it's not only about the speed it's about how far south it dips because if it dips a little bit um less further southward then we're gonna see less of a northerly a uh, northwesterly flow that would push this upper level low further southward and if there's less of a northwesterly flow the upper level low won't really be pushed far south enough to create a highly um a highly sheared environment over this tropical disturbance so the jet this jet stream dip will be key and definitely pay close attention to that over the next several days where we do see the upper level low moves very far south and the wind shear just stays over the caribbean for quite a long time so it's not only the short-term future this um tropical disturbance would need a deal with the wind shear it's also expected at least currently from the gfs model that it's expected to stay for the long haul which could definitely inhibit tropical cyclone development even in the more long-term future with wind shear this strong but still a lot of time to iron out the forecast so make sure to stay tuned for more updates the european model is forecasting a very similar scenario which makes me a little bit more confident that at least over the next five days this forecast will come for fruition when we see two of the most reliable computer models agree with each other then that certainly raises a possibility that it could be true and moving forward with the forecast let me show you guys the 12z run because that gives a more long-term forecast so here's the 12z run we do see very similar to gfs model this first um wave of moisture dissipates under the midst of very dry air that's um, being brought down by this strong ridge just off the coast of Europe but we do see that this second wave of moisture does definitely enhance the moisture right around the Caribbean could bring heavy rainfall and the moisture however isn't as powerful as the isn't as strong as the GFS model which does make sense it's tip um the the GFS model typically does tend to bias um towards a higher amount of humidity the european model might be taking the slightly more realistic approach being a little bit less moisture but if this area of moisture could be a little smaller and if it's able to somehow avoid the um this upper level low that should be located right around this area to avoid the strong wind shear then this on um, the chance that we'll see a tropical cyclone will certainly raise as this approaches the caribbean and in terms of the long-term future we see that this moisture doesn't go away it still continues even on into the united states so it's definitely something to at least be aware of not only for rainfall around the caribbean but for the potential of tropical cyclone development i'll keep you guys updated and also when it comes to wind shear the european model is showing a very similar forecast to gfs model where at around the same time period we see a strong amount of wind shear right over the lesser antilles and the windward islands and this should be prolonged over the caribbean over the the um even into next week so there's definitely something to be aware of definitely going to need to pay close attention to this upper level low 
over the next several days to determine the chances. And, however, I will say that at least for the next five days, it's unlikely we're going to see tropical cyclone development. If we were to see tropical cyclone development, it could maybe happen in the more long-term future if the forecast does change. It's looking unfavorable at this time thanks to the strong wind shear, but definitely there's still time um, for um, potentially for the computer models to shift their forecast and bring the upper level low some someplace else where it could bring up uh, uh, an environment that's more favorable for tropical cyclone development. So definitely stay tuned for more updates. Here are what the European Ensemble members are stating at this time, and there's a reason why you at least need to be aware of this tropical wave as it continues ahead further westward, because we do see some of the Ensemble members do want to develop this into tropical storm status and want to steer this further northward towards the United States. Of course, this is very far out in the future, so definitely don't take this seriously at all, but at least keep tabs on this tropical wave over the next several days, because if we do see an environment where the wind shear is very light and this area of moisture could become more compact, then we certainly could see a tropical storm in our hands. The GFS and some members are a bit more all over the place when it comes to um, where exactly they want to take the storm and also when it comes to strength the GFS model ensemble members are definitely taking more stronger approaches um, especially in the more long-term future the GFS model does tend to bias a little bit more to strengthening storms a little bit too quickly so we need to take the strength with a grain of salt but it's definitely something to be aware of because the GFS model is still definitely a very reliable model is what the National Hurricane Center is expecting over the next seven days or what lack thereof they're expecting where they're not expecting no new tropical cyclones over the next seven days. This could easily change if the National Hurricane Center continues to see signs from the Ensemble members as well as other computer models that, hey, maybe there could be more favorable conditions for this tropical wave to develop. So definitely at least um, keep tabs on the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook as well. So in terms of my overall forecast, I do believe that at least within the near future, I'm talking about within the next five days, we're less likely to see tropical cyclone development. It seems like the area of moisture will be a little bit too spread out and the wind shear will be a little bit too strong, at least early on. Um, but beyond the five days, it just really becomes uncertain. We have some of the ensemble members wanting to develop a tropical storm. So it's so a lot could change from now until, uh, let's say, 10 days when once this approaches around the same latitude as maybe, I mean, the same longitude as maybe the Dominican Republic. That's when the forecast really becomes a little bit more uncertain. But regardless, expect um, heavier rainfall by the middle part of next week, right over the Caribbean islands um, and mid to late next week. So definitely be aware of the flood threat in those areas and at least pay close attention to this um, over the next several days. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching.